Hi guys, Steady Eddie here. Hope all is well. Well, as we have come to the end of 2021, the peak season of many of those wonderful Southeast Asian countries are upon us once again. This never-ending pandemic soap opera goes on and on, but there seems to be light at the end of the tunnel right now. Whereas Thailand and its neighbouring countries missed out on the peak season last year, it seems that things are finally happening and the Thai peak season, which really runs from late November to March, looks like it could finally be happening this year. But how is it happening? And is it happening the way tourists want it to happen? Well, let's remember 2021 has seen Thailand having the most dreadful lockdown, which has gone on for most of the year. Many bars and other entertainment venues have closed, and bar owners who have remained have suffered real badly. The tourist industry in Thailand has taken one hell of a battering these last two years. And let's not forget the Thais who work in these bars. Many have returned to the villages, many are broke, some are homeless. My thoughts are with them. Okay, so Thailand is finally reopening, but in what way? Well, not the way most would want it to be. The good news is they finally jettisoned that awful two-week prison hotel quarantine for all visitors. Now, that's the thing that was putting off so many visiting in the country. It simply is not realistic for short-term tourists to be doing any form of quarantine. So what have they replaced it with? Well, at this moment in time, you will need to book your first SAJ hotel whilst waiting the results of your PCR test. Yes, another one after the first you had before leaving your own country. And if that test negative, you are free to go around the country and explore. This is, of course, a real progression, but it's not perfect. For one thing, there's that dreaded Thailand Pass, which is so frustrating for so many people who were tempted online. And how about the entertainment zones many tourists will wish to visit? Are they rocking and rolling the way they should be? Well, at this moment in time, the answer is no. Things could change, but right now Bangkok and other places are seeing a 9pm curfew on bars serving alcohol. The expensive island of Phuket seems to be a bit livelier, but Pattaya, which many older travellers will wish to visit, seems to be highly questionable. Bars in Pattaya have been refused to open once again. They could open in the middle of January, when the peak of the peak season is coming to an end, but no one is quite sure. It doesn't make for a healthy situation for those travellers who are looking forward to a big winter blast this year in the land of smiles. So many questions, still so much uncertainty. So what are you going to do this year? I mean you, who was in the Western world, facing a harsh Western winter, and wondering shall you book a flight to Thailand for a bit of winter sun? With all these uncertainties, is it worth it? Or is there an alternative? Well, since the beginning of November, something surprising has happened. Cambodia is open. This is the big news I'm hearing. Open as in no quarantine for double jab tourists. Open as in entertainment is reopening. You still need a PCR test before travelling and a quick test when you arrive. But the word is that Cambodia is open and free in the way that Thailand isn't. This has led some to suggest that Cambodia is a real alternative to Thailand. Why bother with a country with so many questions over it when friendly little Cambodia seems to have the full green light? But wait a minute, let's not jump the gun here. The peak season hasn't gone underway yet, and both these countries are emerging from a harsh time when the tourist zones have been decimated, and this will take some time to repair. Let's just talk about what both these countries have to offer and how they compare. Well, Thailand is the most well-known country in this region and has a long-established tourist industry. It has what the wonderful bustling city of Bangkok as well as some rockin' and rollin' beach resorts. At least it does under normal circumstances. These are not normal circumstances. So for those who have never been there, 
What does Cambodia offer that could replace Thailand? Well, in terms of its overall attributes, I have to say Cambodia can't really compare with Thailand. Cambodia is a much smaller country, and whereas you can be spoiled for choice about where to go in Thailand, Cambodia is quite limited in its tourist destinations. So what are Cambodia's tourist hotspots? Well, over the years, there have been three main tourist destinations in Cambodia. There is Siam Reap, the tourist town built near Angkor Wat, one of the great temples of the world. This place is very popular with young travellers. There is the capital, Phnom Penh, which is not to everyone's taste, but I like it. And there is the ramshackle, grimy, dusty, but great fun beach resort of Sihanoukville. These are the three main tourist places. You can also add a few smaller towns, like Battenbang, which seems very undeveloped last time I was there, a few other pleasant towns, and some wonderful islands like Koh Rong, which are also mostly popular with younger travellers. So there you have it. Only three main tourist places? Well, not quite. In fact, there are really now only two. A couple of years before the pandemic struck, something dreadful happened to the Charmin Beach Resort of Sihanoukville. It got demolished to make way for the Chinese casino city by the sea. Yes, for the Western tourist who wants to lounge about at a lively beach resort in Cambodia, I have to say that Sihanoukville just isn't Sihanoukville anymore. So what does this leave you with if you're looking for an alternative to Thailand and attempted by the report that Cambodia is open and welcoming the way that Thailand isn't? Will Cambodia live up to your winter dreams? Well, it depends what you are looking for, how long you're going for and what do you want. Are you going for two weeks? If so, I would say the best place would be Siam Reap. It's a charming town and it has plenty to it, but remember, it is geared up mainly to younger tourists, and it's not a beach resort. If you want to swim, make sure you get a hotel with a pool. It's also important to mention that, at this moment in time, November 2021, a lot of building work is going on in Siam Reap, road improvements, that sort of thing. So don't expect Pub Street or the main tourist areas to be ready just yet. How about the capital, Phnom Penh? It's a surprisingly laid-back capital with a turbulent history. Like I said, it is not to everyone's taste. It has a great nightlife scene at the Riverside area and some of the friendliest, most characterful locals you will find anywhere. But it also has piles of rubbish visible in many of the side streets, crumbling buildings and a few new ones, and this can lead many first-time tourists to conclude it really is a garbage dump. But could you spend two weeks in Phnom Penh? Well, if your only interest is the lovely ladies at the Riverside Bar area, I suppose you could. But remember, these bars will take time to recover from the lockdowns, so they may not be what you'd hoped for. Do you really need a beach resort for your stay in Cambodia? Well, if you know of a lively brash beach resort in the country of Cambodia, then let me know of it, because since the demise of Sihanoukville, I don't know of one. There are other smaller beaches like Otras or those lovely tropical islands, but they may not have much to offer in the way of nightlife. So, a big question, a question that I've been asked by people since I've started this YouTube channel. Does Cambodia have its own version of Pattaya? Well, the answer is, of course, no. But don't forget, at this troubled moment in time, Pattaya doesn't really look very much like Pattaya. I suppose if you were an older guy, have a couple of weeks in the sun, and you want to live it up with the ladies, then the closest you will get to anything like Pattaya will be the Phnom Penh Riverside area. There are plenty of bars, and this area is very much a red light zone. It can be really good, and you may find yourself liking the place a lot. But remember, Phnom Penh is a capital city, a rough, raw-edged and grimy one, and it's not to everyone's taste. 
And seeing as we're on the comparisons with Pattaya, what about live bands? What about go-go bars? What about dirty massages? Well, to be truthful, Cambodia has never really had as much of these things as Thailand has. Phnom Penh has limited live bands, no real go-go scene, and the massages are nowhere near as, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh yes, good, not nearly as good as Pattaya. So, there you have it. I don't want to be negative or dash anyone's hopes of a raunchy alternative to Thailand. I'm just trying to be realistic and tell you what I know. Cambodia is an excellent little country, but cannot overall compare with the variety of places and activities of Thailand. It is, however, the last time I was there, better value for most things. So, want to know more about Cambodia if you've never been there before? You can always check out my older videos from a couple of years ago. But remember, these were all made before the pandemic so popular began, so a lot will have changed since then. So, I'll say thanks for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if it's been useful to you. Subscribe for more videos. And remember to press that all-important notification bell for latest uploads. Let's hope that this winter we'll, re we'll see a return to some form of normality. We can only hope. Cheers.